Let's see what could be hidden here. Let us see what is in this box. bundle of letters in a woman's hand with the Carey family monogram. Hertley and Mrs. Carey were in a relationship. That is interesting. Madam, I am aware of your affinity with Liam Hurtley. Oh, what are you talking about? Mrs. Carey, we found your letters. My letters? I asked Liam to return them to me. I wanted to burn them. Why did Mr. Hurtley put them inside the garden shed? I... I don't know. I wanted them back, but I couldn't see him. Not after... what happened. Well, here they are. Oh, this is terrible. Terrible. Liam, how could he? I... after what he has done. You believe that he killed your husband? No, I do not know. I do not know. Leave me alone, please. Thank you, madam. I wonder if Wiggins has managed to find any sailors. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, we found the sailors from that list you gave us. Well done, Wiggins. Let me see. This man is a harpooner, and his initials are PC, the same initials that were found on the tobacco pouch. Wiggins, could you gather some information on one of the sailors that you found? His name is Patrick Cairns. We found Patrick Cairns. Good job, Wiggins. Where is he? He lives in a small furnished dump of a room, but he's always at the Sea Witch Pub, where he does arm wrestles for money and drinks. Excellent. Here is your reward. Two guineas. Thank you, sir.
If I wish to speak to Cairns without alarming him, I had better dress as a sailor. Now I can approach Cairns and see if he recognizes the pouch. Hello there. Are you Cairns? What do you want? We've heard all about the gambling and arm wrestling here. You seem like the likely sort, and I'm up for it. I start at ten shillings. Suits me. Well, good for you, I reckon. You're stronger than you look. Here's your ten shillings. I'd like to buy you a drink. Good winner as well. That's good. Let's have a drink. You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh, well. At least you're not as poor as me. Why do you say poor? You're not working. I'm a harpooner. But you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So, as a result, I find myself arm wrestling to pay for my drink. A harpooner? Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Ah, of course. It's been a dozen years since I've sailed. I've seen everything. Old Wallace, Dan Black Peter, Great Roger. We sailed to the Cape of Good Hope. Black Peter, you say? I've heard rumors about that one. He was the worst of them all. He was a liar and violent too. Swinging those fists of his around. He's a tyrant and not much of a captain. At least, not as good as Great Roger. I see. Yes. I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. Tell me, and let's have another drink. It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn. And I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her, and he wasn't a sailor. The crew must have thought that she had foundered, and they made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. And who was he? I don't know. During the crossing, he and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. His baggage was just a tin box. That's strange enough. Aye, even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course, nobody could ask Black Peter about it. You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night, two days before we sighted the Shetland lights. 
Black Peter's a murderer. Aye. For those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it. But all this must stay between us. All right? Of course. Back in a second. Are you moved to the Kazi? I'll be here with my drink. Here it is. Have you got any tobacco? We've run out of mine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, oh, uh, oh, it is. Well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab's his name. He commanded the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe, if you like, I. I'm done here. It's time to leave. The case is solved. I am now ready to present the guilty party. So tell me, who killed Black Peter? There are two culprits, Inspector. Nelligan and Hurtley. What? Well, I would never have guessed, Mr. Holmes. They are a rotten pair, though. It was a combination of two motives, culminating in one crime. What were their motives? The first was revenge. Black Peter possessed the bond certificates that had belonged to Nelligan's father, and young Nelligan wished to retrieve them. And the second? The second was a crime of passion. Liam Hurtley was in love with Black Peter's wife, and this caused a conflict between him and Carrie. Well, well, well. Makes sense, Mr. Holmes. I suggest that you organize a small confrontation between the two just to confirm my accusation. That's a good idea, Mr. Holmes. I'll talk to these fellows. Join me in the interrogation room. Gentlemen, we know everything about your association to kill Black Peter. Admit that you planned it together. Our association? I don't even know this man. You needed to kill Peter Carey. There had to be two of you there. Ridiculous. I'm innocent. All that remains is to determine the level of guilt. Which one of you is the initiator in this case? 
But I just told you, I've never seen this man before. It's him. He's the culprit. He was forcing me. He threatened me. He's the mastermind behind it all. Shut up. You're a lunatic. Well, it all seems very clear, don't you think, Mr. Holmes? Both are guilty, of course, but I believe that Hurtley was the initiator of the crime. It's ridiculous. Why would I need the help of this weakling? You wanted to be rid of the man who was terrorizing his wife and who prevented the two of you from being together. Young Nelligan was just following his lead. You are wrong. I have nothing whatsoever to do with this. You'll explain that to the judge. The case is resolved, Inspector. I shall return to Baker Street. Very well, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye for now. This trip to the countryside will be good for you, Holmes. Hmm. As your friend and your doctor, I really do recommend that you give yourself a complete change of scene. Fresh air, brisk walks, bird watching, chopping wood. Sounds intoler... I mean, certainly it sounds delightful. But you haven't yet told me who your friend is. The one we're going to visit. He is a bee lover. A bee lover? Do you mean that he keeps bees? That must be Mrs. Hudson, bringing the warm cloth that I requested. There is someone to see you, Mr. Holmes. I have no time. Send whoever it is away. Yes, Holmes, I really think we ought to leave now. Mycroft. Oh. Sherlock. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes? Perhaps you don't remember me. I'm Dr. Watson. Uh, we met at the Diogenes Club a few years ago. I documented our encounter in a short story I gave the title The Greek Interpreter. He does remember you, Watson. My brother remembers everything, and that is why he is so valuable to the government. We are about to depart for the train station. I know. You know? Sherlock, I need your help. There are people who presently threaten both our country and the Crown itself. You must help us with those methods of yours. Need? Help? Those are not words I would readily associate with you, Mycroft. I wrote you a letter, but you did not reply. And this is not about politics. It's about people. People similar to those whom you pretend to defend in your petty detective affairs. Everything is about politics with you, Mycroft. I'm not interested. Have some of your agents, your spies, or worse, undertake this job of yours. You are defending your people, and they have little to do with the people I choose to help, I can assure you. That's the point. You think exactly as they do. Who are they? The Merry Men. He is talking about the Merry Men. A band of idealistic terrorists. Sherlock, do please think about it. They are planning something diabolical. Your country needs you. You need me, Mycroft, and you are not the country. Although if your waistline expands very much further... Mrs. Hudson, tea will not be necessary. Dr. Watson, the train conductor, Mr. Parker, is aware that you will be seven minutes late. You are in the fourth car. The train will be waiting for you. Sherlock, enjoy your time in Staffordshire. And do, please, at least write to me on your return. <laughs>